Hi, welcome back. This is Deborah Peters, The Deborah Peters Show, your lunchtime mind hack. I am so pleased to be with you today. It's Friday, it's gorgeous, it's the end of the week. Hi, Willie. So happy you joined us. And I've got an amazing show for you today. You know, we've been on this whole vein of how to shift your mindset, how to, to um, change your patterns, how to recondition your programming. Hi, Jimmy and Rain, nice to see you. So I thought perhaps for this Friday show, I would go into it a little more deeply and I'd share with you another tool so you can actually kind of put that in your hip pocket and use it for yourself on an ongoing basis no matter what it is that you are creating or experiencing in your business, personal life, relationships, because it all is one, right? Hey, Sean, nice to have you. And Alexander, fantastic to have you guys jumping on board with me. I, um, I think this has been one of the most uh, up-level weeks of the month of January for 2019. I was ready to go on January 2nd and was um, digging in and, and creating and making things happen, but folks were still a little bit checked out. So for those of you that live in America, hi, Kimberly and Pete. How are you guys? Um, Pete's from the UK. I think you're in LA now. By the way, I really like your design work. It's fantastic. Hi, Jim and Enrique. So, um, where was I? <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this beginning of the year, um, I was like raring to go. I think I mentioned this to you in my last show that I feel like I started 2019 back in the early part of November. So once we got through the holidays, I was like really seriously raring to go. Um, and if you're in America, you know that the way the holidays stack up, like with Thanksgiving, late November, and then we've got Christmas, and then we've got New Year's, it seems like it's this like really elongated time frame where people are kind of checked out, going to parties and handling all the things that they handle with their families and their friends and their business associates. And <sighs> makes it a little tricky to get people to the table, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, excuse me, it's okay because it's a great time to, to plan and create and, and to map things out. Um, so I am really curious. I, I put up a poll today. I have this group on, on Facebook. It's just for the girls. Sorry, guys. But uh, I put a poll out this morning and said, you know, how are you doing with those New Year's <laughs> I don't I don't like resolutions. I don't think they have any traction, but a lot of people still set resolutions. Um, so how are you doing with your resolutions? How are you maintaining uh, the, the move, movement and the momentum on creating your goals? I used to own a gym and it was really fascinating because all the the regulars that came all year long, dedicated, you know, they were, it was a lifestyle for them, would kind of get a bit miffed in January when we'd have this huge influx of people that were wanting to get into shape for the new year. And um, they'd come in and they'd kind of fill up the gym and take up all this space, but um, they didn't stick around. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm curious how you're doing with your goals and your resolutions. And do you still have the traction and the excitement and the enthusiasm that you had at the beginning of January rocking into the year and saying, you know, this is my year. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to kick butt this year. And this is, you know, this is the year that I hit my numbers or, or whatever your your resolution or your goals have been. So, hey, Travis, nice to have you. Um, so, yeah, just put in the comment section uh, how you doing with that. Are you on track? Have you have you started? Has it started to wane off a little bit? Do you still have the same level of 
enthusiasm and passion for the year that you had rolling into the month because old patterns die hard. And that is actually what today's show is all about, is how to repattern and reprogram your mindset. And um, hi, Lily, good to have you. So there's a couple of things that we covered off in last in the last show, which was just a few days ago. And I hope you've been starting to work with this information and these tools because it's a way of consistently up leveling your life. You know, um, whatever we experience externally is always a reflection of what's going on internally. And I've, I've um, experimented with this so much in my lifetime, just, you know, in my own personal life and also in my business with my team. And I've had different teams over the years, you know, it's, it's interesting because the people that start with you rarely end with you. I wonder if that's true about relationships in all levels, but that's another conversation at another time. Um, and, you know, as, as we evolve as human beings and we become more self-aware, then we shift and we change and we evolve and our vibration increases, our positivity, um, our ability to, to be positive affects our vibration. Hi, Clement. Oh, I have a comment here from Kimberly and she says, yes, the old patterns are creeping up, but I'm more aware of that. And isn't that kind of the way it is, you know? Um, because I'm not immune to it either. You know, I just want to put this out there that just because I'm a coach doesn't mean that I don't have anything to work on. And so, hi Maurizio. In fact, as a coach, I probably have the most to work on. I probably have had the most baggage. I probably have had the, the most challenges and I probably still have the most baggage and the most challenges. And because I, I say that because as a coach, I think in a, in a lot of ways, you know, we're held to a higher standard. And I also think that we hold ourselves to a higher standard. You know, I look at my life, I'm probably the most hard on myself of anyone I know. Because I look at my life and I go, wow, Deborah, you you shouldn't be here. Like you should be in a different place because you have all these tools because you've been studying the mind and human behavior and the evolution of the mindset and consciousness and oneness forever. You know, I've been studying this since I was, um, I don't know, a kid, I suppose in some ways, you know, because it's, it's stuff that I knew coming into the planet and I uh, was fascinated by it. I remember riding the school bus. I grew up in a rural area and I remember riding the school bus and um, just observing people. You know, I was, I've always been a people watcher. And um, when the kids would get on the bus and we'd roll into their the yard of their farm to collect them or drop them off and, I would think to myself, hmm, I wonder why their life looks different than my life, or I wonder why this family um, lives this way and this family lives that way. You know, that kind of stuff has always fascinated me. So I've always been a great observer of people. And so um, early on in my path of becoming a coach, I decided that really, what I wanted to do is just become a better mother. You know, I just wanted to be a better parent. And I was a single mom. And so, you know, when you're going that alone, you need to have absolutely every possible toolbox to keep your, you know, from losing your shit, basically. So um, I started studying communication skills and um, transactional analysis. If you guys know anything about transactional analysis, the hypothesis is that each of us, regardless of our age, has within us an adult, a child, and a parent. 
And so you could be five or two and you could come from a very adult perspective on things or a very sort of parent type, you know, that's why we see kids nurturing like their dolls or their animals or whatever. Or, you know, we could be 90 and we could have the kid in us. And so we're not as individuals, um, these robots that just fit into these ruts or boxes or frames of mind that only work one way. We're multidimensional. And um, when it comes to going after your goals and staying enthusiastic over longer periods of time, it really comes down to mind mastery. It really comes down to being able to master yourself. Hi, David. Nice to see you. I hope this, uh, these tools help you guys today. And Greg is here. Thank you for joining us. Um, so in the mastery of yourself, I think it's um, <clears throat> really important to know how you tick. And so self-awareness is really key. Knowing what pushes your buttons, you know, what gets you all fired up and what triggers you and what makes you mad and what makes you happy and what makes you sad. And it's like, what's going on in your world or your life that triggers you? And then instead of looking at that circumstance or that situation and blaming it for you being triggered, you can actually look within and go, well, what's this really about? You know, what am I so all bent out of shape about? Or why am I crying? Or why, why is this person, you know, so amazing to me, but this person is not? Because pretty much everything that we are living is not ours. And pretty much everything that we are thinking is not ours. We just pick this stuff up from the people around us. Hi, Patrick. Nice to have you join us. Um, so our environment is really a big influence on who we are being and who we are becoming. And how you shape that is up to you. You can decide who's in your life. You can decide who you spend time with. You can decide what you pay attention to in the media. Um, it's all up to you. It's all up to me and it's all up to you. And we have that freedom. So what I wanna share with you today is how to actually repattern your thought processes and your um, response mechanisms to your environment. Now the environment could be your spouse, um, your team, your clients, your coworkers, your boss, whatever the case is, your, you know, your friends, your pals, even your past, right? That could also be something that you're responding to and that you're taking that and projecting that out into today's reality. And then you end up making today look like it did yesterday and you make tomorrow look like it did today. And so you've, essentially what ends up happening is your whole life rolls by and it looks exactly the way today, the way it did 10 or 20 years ago. And this is pretty common for people. So I wanna give you the tools to, um, to bust out of that, basically. I wanna give, give you a mind hack today. And that's, oh, I have a question for you. So do you like the title of, or the subtitles of this, the Deborah Peters show? So, your lunchtime mind hack. Cause I'm feeling like, you know, midday, if you're anything like me, midday is a really good time to hit the reset button. It's not just about eating food. It's about literally hitting the reset button. It's why I go for a walk every day at lunch, just to get some sunshine, air on my skin, say hi to some people, smile at folks, you know, it's, um, everybody loves to have a big smile coming at them when you're walking down the street. And so I like to give away lots of smiles when I go for my lunchtime walk. So I'm curious, I'm very curious. I'd love to see in the comments from some of you other guys, you know, what's happening with your, um, goals, with the traction, with the momentum, with the enthusiasm for creating 
the life and the year that you want to create and live. And so next I'm going to show you a little bit about how to repattern that. And I'll just give you guys a chance to be able to put in some of your comments here. Now I want to just uh, let you know a little update. Okay. So, um, I'm speaking in Amsterdam on the 8th and 9th of March at the Women's Economic Forum. I am absolutely thrilled at this opportunity. There's going to be several hundred women attending this event. They have these events in different countries around the world and I've been asked to do two presentations one on the 8th and one on the 9th. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled. And I got a notice today that I'm receiving an award. And the award is titled Iconic Women Making the World a Better Place. And I'm so excited to have this opportunity because what's more cool <laughs> than impacting other people's lives and helping them feel better? I mean, it's the ultimate, it's the epitome of being of service. So I've got that going on. And we're still working on a little glitch on the server to get the website uploaded. I'm, I'm really hoping it goes live today, please. Send me lots of juice on that. I wanna make sure that that gets popped up and we're rocking and rolling. Um, and we're partnering up with NASDAQ in London. Yes, the stock exchange. And uh, I'm doing a talk there for women in business, particularly women in finance. So I'm very excited about my European and UK travels coming up in March and looking forward to just getting on a jet, going somewhere, having some uh, new experiences, meeting some new people, and of course being of service. And uh, I love speaking on stages, so that's always fun for me. Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you. And Jose and Nelly. Wonderful to have you. Um, the other thing that's going on with our event um, at NASDAQ is we're really partnering up on a long term scale here to be able to continually offer women in business the tools to grow and expand. And this is um, this is an ongoing process. I really invite women to kind of repattern some of their mindset around their possibilities and what they can do for themselves in the world of business and just go for it. You know, there's a lot of old programming there. There's a lot of old belief systems culturally, um, generationally, uh, you know, it, it just, it, the gender divide is a thing of the past. It's an archaic paradigm that just doesn't have any place in society anymore. So I want to really invite the women to come through on that. And then that's the other part about the Women's Economic Forum is how much I appreciate what they have built globally. And for me to be able to influence that and be a part of that magnificent organization is really a blessing. So, hey, Frank Gonzalez, nice to have you. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit then about um, the next programs we have coming up. And the Shift Change Heal Your Money story is an online course I teach. It's, it's rolling out later on in February. And on February 22nd and 23rd, I'm teaching the Business Accelerator Bootcamp here live in Los Angeles. And that's a very small um available window for people. I typically hand select 10 people that own businesses to join us. So it'd be, um, it'd be great to have you. All right, so let's see. Um, Kimberly, I found I need to work on mindset repatterning as I go forward. This has brought me to a point of doing things differently in order to get to where I want to be. Yeah, as within, so without, right? like I was saying earlier, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have or where you live or who you know, or what you do for a living every single day, all day long, it's an opportunity to repattern your mindset and just, you know, never get complacent. You guys stay with it all the time because you can, you're, you're, you're an infinite being. You're never going to get it all done. 
you've you've loaded so many requests and desires up into your um, mind about what you want your life to look like that you know there's probably enough there for lifetimes so just you know be gentle with yourself and know that you as an infinite being you you'll never cease to be and you'll never stop growing so always keep working on learning these tools and applying these tools in different ways that you can consistently increase and expand your awareness and step into flow and draw to you and attract to you that which you'd like to experience from relationships, people, business growth, money, whatever it is for you, all of the above, right? Health, um, and just keep going and just keep stepping and just keep growing and just keep expanding and keep asking for more. You have to keep asking for more. And that was the point of this show today is are you asking big enough? Most people are not. Thank you, Nellie. That's so sweet of you. And Laudia, thank you so much for joining us. Are you asking big enough plan? Why isn't my life bigger and better than it was before? Why don't why am I not the new shiny up-leveled version of me that I was yesterday? And I'll tell you why. It all comes down to how you feel. All of it. It all comes down to how you feel. The emotions and the feelings that you let run around in your body and in your mind are what really get things coming towards you. So it's your job every single moment to choose to be happy and to choose to feel good. One thing you can do immediately with that is... Um, you can um, repattern yourself at a sensory based level. So essentially your sensory acuity, okay? What does that mean? Well, as human beings, we take in reality through all of our senses. We see things, so visual. We hear things, which is auditory. We feel things, which is kinesthetic. And we feel things in a tactile way, which is kinesthetic tactile. We smell things, which is olfactory, and we taste things, which is gustatory. And then of course we intuit things, which is um, another realm of the kinesthetic, but it could also come in as an auditory, it could come in as a visual. So, you know, we've got clairaudient, clair clairsentient, um, and, and these are the different realms of receiving information and also projecting information of what we want out into the unified field or the quantum field or the universe or, or the, the malleable, infinite, unseen forces, the God force, whatever you want to call it. So the, the, the thing is, is that we can be asking for something like I want this to show up in my life, but I feel bad because I don't have it. So what that does is that creates a canceling out effect. So we ask for it, but then we go into doubt. And this is why I'm not a fan of the plan B concept, right? Because if you're really dedicated to plan A, you do not need a plan B. You do not need an escape hatch. You do not need a go-to just in case. And I remember having a conversation one time, it's about a decade ago, with someone that was getting married. I used to do couples coaching. And I asked the question, you know, are you really sure that this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with? And the response was, well, if it doesn't work, I can always get a divorce. So that person really told me was not committed. When I'm talking with business owners and they say words like, well, we'll see what happens, or we'll try, or hopefully this will come together. I know they're not committed. So if you've got those kinds of terms 
going on in your language patterns, you need to cut it out because you are literally, you are literally blocking yourself from creating whatever it is that you're asking for. And this happens through our sensory acuity because it changes how we feel. It changes what we see in our mind. It changes our perceptions of how we see the world. It changes the energy that we project out there into the world. And that actually keeps you stuck. It keeps you stuck. So in the sensory acuity, we call those modalities, okay? They're modal operators. So they're modalities of how we take in life and how we express to the quantum field, to the unseen forces, to the God force. I think I'm gonna just start calling it the God force and then I don't have to like explain it with all these <laughs> other, I'm just trying to be politically correct and just find a term that everybody's happy with, you know? So uh, I'm just gonna call it the God force from now on. You guys can do with it whatever you want and you can call it whatever you want. So in this, um, relating with the God force, it happens at a sensory acuity level. And that's the what you're transmitting through your brain. And that's what the brain responds to. So when you can get yourself really happy about something you're creating, because it inspires you, and you're enthusiastic about it, not excited, not excited, that's a manufactured state, but inspired is an internal state. It's a, it comes from within, whereas excitement comes from without. And the problem with excitement, and I see this in sales teams all the time, the problem with excitement is it wears off. When you hit your number, you take your foot off the gas. The excitement wears off. There needs to be something that you are inspired by, because that's a deeper sort of spiritual kind of concept that's at a soul level that you can connect to. And when you're in that space of happiness and enthusiasm and inspiration, then that actually triggers your brain in a whole different way, which attracts to you a whole new set of experiences. So that's my mind hack for today. And it's almost the end of January. We've got one more show this month, which I'm really excited about because I, I, what I'd like to do with February shows is get into a little bit more along the lines of actually applying this into your business. And, um, giving you um, some scope on, okay, this is a mind hack, but this is about me. Then what do I do with that mind hack with others? Like people on my team, people I need to motivate, my clients, you know, all of these different relationships that you have. So that's my mind hack for today. Thank you so much for joining me, please. And thank you for sharing my show with your tribe. Let's double the number of people that jump on here with us twice a week. So Tuesdays and Fridays at 1230. And then what I do is I upload the recording to my YouTube channel. So you can jump over to Neuro Engineering Institute, N-E-U-R-O Engineering Institute. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's a whole lot more free content. There's over 150 videos that I've recorded that's there. And we we feel like we've hit a critical mass on the content now. We can start blowing up subscribership and we'd love to have you be a part of that. So I'm wishing you all a really tremendous and blessed weekend and that you actually take some time this weekend to play with some of the sensory acuity really get into tune with, you know, do you see the world more or do you feel the world more? Do you hear the world more? Do you intuit the world more? Like start to really pay some attention 
to the relationship that you have with the world, how you view it, how you take it in, and what you make of that, and then how you utilize that in your life to create and actualize the relationships, the health, the wealth, the work, the joy, the fulfillment in every area of your life. So again, this is Deborah Peters signing off, wishing you a blessed weekend. The Deborah Peters Show, your lunchtime mind hack. Love you.